never seen Phantom. I watched the movie of Cats, and for various reasons, had a great time. So, Cats. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> hmm. Just had a good takeout that night, and you were just, you were just. There, there's some choices that are being made all over that film that I really, really appreciated, and uh, I, I'm, I had a very, as I said, very good time. Okay. Everybody to dance house after this. We're watching cats. Prepare your ears, humans. Happy, sad, confused begins now. Oh, hi, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Save it for the important people. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Josh Horowitz, and today on Happy, Sad, Confused, we're live at the 92nd Street Y with the cast of Merrily We Roll Along, guys. Are you ready for this? Um, I can tell you're ready. How many of you have actually gotten the chance to see Merrily We Roll Along on Broadway? Yes! Uh, this show, to paraphrase uh, the show itself, it's a hit. The reviews are in. It is a phenomenon. It's been playing since October. It is thankfully playing till July. If you haven't seen it yet, get your tickets because this cast uh, that are just a few feet away are so talented. They are singing, dancing, acting behemoths. I'm so thrilled to welcome them to this stage. Some are newbies to the podcast, some are not. I want you to give a warm, warm welcome to Lindsay Mendez, to Jonathan Groff. Jonathan, come on out. And to Daniel Radcliffe, everybody, come on out. Hello, thank you. Hi. Hey. Hi, guys. Welcome. Hello, thank you for having us. Thank you. Uh, first of all, many congratulations are in order, not only on the show, uh, breaking news. Congratulations, Lindsay. Just yesterday announced she's having a baby. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, also, an important day for Jonathan. Beyonce announced her track list yesterday. <laughs> Equally as important. I'm freaking out. I'm yeah. so excited. Yeah. I'm more excited about this, obviously, way more important. Thank you. That is the right, that is the right answer. Yes. Well done. Yes. yes. Dan, is there anything comparably exciting? How was your fantasy football in the, in the last few months? Uh, it was very bad. Football was very bad for me this year. Um, the Lions did well, though. That was nice. Okay. Yeah, that was fun. Good. And then it ended in heartbreak, as, as, as a Lions season should, I suppose. Um, <laughs> but it was, no, it was great. Yeah. Um, this show is amazing. We're going to uh, dive in deep. This is, uh, what a story. Um, as I'm sure this audience knows, Merrily We Roll Along has quite a history to it, and you guys are gonna forever be known as the folks that, that made it a hit, that really brought it back to Broadway in the way that Sondheim, I'm sure, always dreamed it would be. So that's, that's my last congratulations of the beginning, but we'll come back to it. Um, talk to me a little bit about your history with Sondheim and specifically this musical. Has anybody ever played in this show, in theater, and school at all prior? I, I didn't know uh, that my first introduction to this show was seeing this exact production in London in 2013, I think. Um, I wasn't aware of any of the history of what had happened when it first came out. Um, the documentary obviously wasn't out at that point, and so I hadn't seen that. Um, so I only ever knew it as a show that really worked. <laughs> like, I didn't have any kind of, like, complicated feelings. I was like, I, you know, I watched Damien Humbley do an incredible version of Franklin Shepard Inc., and I was like, oh, my God, what an incredible song. And I very rarely think this but I did at that time think god I would love to I would love to sing that song one day um but yeah I did and my history with Sondheim is um I, I did listen to a lot of it growing up my parents who I think are here somewhere um they oh. um they uh <laughs> <laughs> they um they played a lot of not this show in the car but I we used to like Sondheim show tunes were like a big thing on like road trips and stuff so we I listened to like Company a lot and sure. Follies and and many other shows that um the soundtrack to Chicago used to terrify me um and so yeah it was a lot of I, I was you know, introduced young so when this comes around for you guys, I mean, you must have known the storied history, obviously, loving musical theater as much as you guys do. Um, is there trepidation or excitement? Like, I mean, is there a thought like, maybe there's a reason why it didn't work in the first place? Or is it more of like, we can turn it around and we can expose folks to what people were missing in the first place? What was kind of your attitude when it kind of we came had, We were lucky to have this off-Broadway run at New York Theater Workshop. And I, I yes, <laughs> New York Theater Workshop, yes. And uh, I, like Dan, so I had seen the documentary uh, about Merrily, but I hadn't seen a production until I went on YouTube 
and you can still, like, spoiler, you can go on YouTube and see Maria's production from London. It's still on there. Uh, and it's incredible. And it's the same set and uh, costumes and concept uh, as, as our show. And I, I remember seeing that and feeling like, oh, wow, this is a hit. But when we were doing it off Broadway, it was so interesting to to feel like uh, it's such a um, it's such a delicate, nuanced piece of theater. And Maria Friedman, our director, has directed the show within an inch of its life, and we got this experience downtown of getting to refine and figure out every little look and every little gesture and every little bit of comedy and bit of drama with this amazing ensemble group of actors. So it was like the, the excited to do the piece, but I feel like um, we, we like found our version of it off Broadway. So when we came to Broadway, we kind of knew what we were doing. It wasn't like we, we thought it was gonna be a hit and we were gonna bring this back to Broadway, but we knew the, the story that we were telling when we finally- You liked it, you were Yeah, happy. and we but knew I what do, we, we were doing. I yeah. remember we, we, um, they put the tickets on sale for the off-Broadway run before we started rehearsal. And the three of us were doing group chats where that we would send video messages. and we heard that it sold out in eight minutes, that run, the entire run. And I remember saying to you guys like, oh shit, people are coming. <laughs> and and they, there's an expectation, like we better get this right. I felt all of a sudden it was like, I was very panicked about like, is this gonna be a disaster and everyone will see the disaster? Like, so I think, you know, it was definitely like, we we had our heads down and we were working our, our butts off downtown to just like get it get it right. This is a show about friendship and either you guys are amazing actors or you clearly really legitimately love each other. Um, it's really wonderful to see the camaraderie between all of you. Um, but some of you didn't know each other necessarily. Dan, you didn't have a history with these guys prior to this. No, no. I mean. Weirdly, we, me and Jonathan have one mutual friend who, who had years ago had said to me, like, you, I just feel like you need to meet and be friends with Jonathan Groff at some point. Like, you guys, I know you're going to hit it off. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, and you guys knew each other already. And then Jonathan, you know, started sending, <laughs> um, uh, Jonathan started sending uh, video messages. And you both started sending video messages back and forth. And then I, my reaction to that on the chain was like, oh my God, do I have to do videos now? <laughs> um, and, Isn't it and, enough to do the well, show? So they would like, they would, you know, just clearly be just throwing off a video quickly while they're doing something else. Or Jonathan's walking around Times Square with his helmet on and, you know, t telling a story. And and I, I, I just, like I was like I was literally like okay, make notes on everything that they've said so you can address all the points that they've made in their videos <laughs> so you can make sure to send it all back. And I was like starting again. I was like no, this is rubbish. I've said something. You've wrong. You've gotten so much better it. though. You, you now really, I don't care. Now really I know that. Well, now I know you. Like, there are no stakes. <laughs> <anymore. laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Now I know like, there's less pressure to like feel like I have to try and make a good impression. I don't know. What is it? What is a, a typical Jonathan Groff video message entail? What would uh? What... A lot of nudity. <laughs> It always ends with, okay, bye! <laughs> Doesn't it, Dan? Yes, absolutely. See you guys later! <laughs> Jonathan, is that a conscious decision or are you just not good with the end button? Are you, <laughs> are you? I like building to, like, to a climax that never ends. <laughs> what? You're, that wow. seems like barely you're, you're a response better than to that. what Josh just said. <laughs> This is a fun game. Every sentence that Jonathan Groff says can be taken out of context and be horrible. Yes, really that can. is <laughs> so true. Yes. <laughs> so rather than uh, hear one of you guys give a, a synopsis of the play, I want to hear what this show is about from each of your characters' perspectives. From the vantage point of the character you play, what is Merrily We Roll Along about? You should start. You want me to start? You should start. Okay, I think, let me defend Frank here for a second. <laughs> I think the show, uh, this is my, when, uh, my mom came to see us off Broadway and I was, she lives in Lancaster, Pennsylvania and is a gym teacher. And so I was so fascinated to see what her take was gonna be of the show. 
afterwards. And I feel like what she said is kind of Frank's perspective uh, of the show, which is it's a show about people's ability to accept uh, or like inability to accept the fact that we're all changing all the time. And whether that's an internal, okay, whether that's like an internal change or like uh, people around you changing, just the idea of whether or not you're able to accept uh, change. That was my mom said that. Isn't that great? That's amazing. Yeah. As a, as yeah, a, mom. As a side note, his dad just calls me Charlie. He, I like, he came backstage and he just called me Charlie the whole time and I loved it. <laughs> um, yeah, my dad, I asked my dad what he thought and uh, he said, well, the, I still can't figure out the hearing aids, so I didn't really hear anything, but all the acting looked great. <laughs> great movement. Um, <laughs> anybody want to talk about it from Charlie or Maria's perspective or what you think the show is? Uh, I think, um, I mean, uh, for Mary, uh, she's she meets these guys and they she finally feels like she has a place in the world with them and they push her to be her best and um and she clings to them and that and um is desperately trying to hold it together as she doesn't want to accept that things change um yeah very sad um, and yeah, I think it is to me the most interesting conflicts in in any story are um, where no one's really wrong. Like everyone just mm -hmm. wants different things, and that's what I think. You know, there's been a version of this show that is talked about where it's like art versus commerce, and Charlie is is talked about as like the purist who just wants to do write stuff. And like, I have a real hard time with you know. F all Frank wants to do is make movies. I love making movies. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that. Um, you know, and so it's a, uh, it's the story of this, of yeah, of these, of Charlie meets these two extraordinary people, um, who he falls like deeply in love with both of them, and it's about them, you know, him trying to, you know, all the times he's saying to Frank you know, why won't you, why do you want to make these films? Why can't we just work on the show? All he's really saying is, I just want to, I just want us to be us together. I don't want any of this other stuff. Um, and, you know, that, yeah, it's, it, it, there is a sadness to it. But and also, Charlie is kind of the only character that ends up pretty okay. <laughs> like, he, Charlie has, like, a wife and four kids and has a lovely life. And, you know, he kind of gets out all right. But, um, but yeah, to me, it's just, it's about people trying to hold a friendship together. And as your mom really brilliantly said, like, with, their inability, with various levels of being able to accept the change that we all go through. Well, and I think on one of the many reasons it works is that I found myself, I've been able to see it twice, but at different points in the show, you relate to all the characters, right? You've, you've been, we've all been all three of these characters in our lives. Um, I was talking about your personal relationships. I'm curious to your philosophy on this. Like, can great chemistry, can great acting, rather, outrun a lack of chemistry with somebody off screen? Would this work, in all honesty, if one of you didn't necessarily like the other person? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, like I don't them, so, so I think it's working. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> have you ever, we're not naming names, needless to say, but have you ever worked with somebody that you haven't necessarily enjoyed? And God, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think, honestly, the thing that it makes, if I, this is probably a really boring, like, non-artistic question, too, to this, for this answer, but the thing that it makes the best is the press. Like, doing press, when you're doing a show with somebody that's, like, in any way you're, like, supposed to be really good friends, or you're this, or you're that, doing that with somebody that you're not even, like, don't, that you don't like, but that you're just like, we're just two people who went to work together, and then, you know, being on a press room, you're like, yes, we're incredibly close. <laughs> is, uh, that's really, that stresses me out a lot. I don't know, I mean, I think, I think chemistry is ultimately just like people being open and curious about each other, and we're spending a lot of time together, and, you know, and, uh, yeah, so I mean, I, th I think it was it was pretty instant with us, and I'm very, very grateful. I do sometimes think about what this show would be like to do with, people that I did not enjoy, and it would be a nightmare. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, we're, we're, very, we're very lucky. Look guys, there are some things in life you should compromise on and some things you should never, ever, ever compromise on. Sure, compromise on that overpriced health food store because it's convenient. That's 
fine, I get it. But never, ever compromise when it comes to your health. Instead, check out ZocDoc. It's the place where you can find and book doctors who will make you feel comfortable, listen to you, and yes, prioritize your health. You can search by location, availability, and insurance. So literally, there are no compromises here because with ZocDoc, you've got more options than you know. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. That instant part is super important to me because I don't know about you, but I have spent countless hours of my life begging for the next available appointment with a doctor, a doctor I'm not even sure I want to see. But these doctors are ones you want to see. They are verified by actual real patients. That's right, verified reviews. Plus, you can filter specifically for doctors who take your insurance or are located near you and treat basically any condition that you're searching for. If I needed a doctor, I would use ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash happy sad and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc.com slash happy sad. ZocDoc.com slash happy sad. We're going to have to address the elephant in the room, uh, the Jonathan Groff spitting phenomenon. I'm contractually... I'm contractually obligated as a journalist to bring it up. I apologize, Jonathan. But everybody knows about it. Jonathan Groff secretes a lot of fluids from every part of his body. And I've seen it. Secretes is not the right word. They come out. They come out, yeah. (laughs) There's nothing gentle about it. (laughs) So have you ever had a co-star complain? Have you ever had somebody be like, dude, you got to control this thing? So, um... Is, there, is this a yes? Do you have a yes? Oh, my God. No, I was just going to say that, well, first of all, I, I, I can't believe how patient these two are with the, the amount of fluid that's coming at them. And it's, like, it's real love. And, it, and I, I, not a day goes by <laughs> where I'm not grateful for that and, like, the love. And I, like, because it's disgusting. And so some days at the, at the end of Act One of Spring Awakening, when I would be in the hayloft with Leah Michelle, uh, some days I would be sweating so much (laughs) that, and we were simulating sex, and it would like, if I had done Bikram yoga that day, that was really when it would happen, because my system would be like, Amped Maybe the skip yoga. the Bikram Yoda dude. Yeah, the yoga dude. <laughs> so that I would, I we would like do, I would do the yoga, and then I would go do the night show, and I'd be like, oh my god, I'm soaking wet. <laughs> and then I would be on top of her in the hayloft, and the water would be coming down my face, and then go to like, it, like a kind of like a fa- like a low faucet, like where it's just dripping in a straight line onto her body. And the and the and it would do the insertion, which was the find the blackout, and then she would go <laughs> in the black, and she would go, "Oh my God, get off of me!" We we do sometimes leave the stage because at the end of Act One in our show, we're all we're basically a, lo- a huge amount of the cast is on stage at the end, and Jonathan's just done a scene where he is crying. Crying makes other stuff happen. It's all happening, um, and there are some moments where like we Jonathan exits stage right, and we all exit stage left, and there are some moments where we do all come off, and you just hear everyone go, "Jesus, he is disgusting." <laughs> <laughs> Um, really? But I will say, yes, but yeah. I will say. Or like, I've slipped in your yes. puddles. Yeah. It's true, it's... I have slipped <laughs> in your puddles. Is there nothing that medical science can do? We saw, we, sh- fa- we found a cure for COVID and we can't fix the Jonathan no. Groff sweating no, well, problem? It's really, I will say... The best is seeing the front row hold their playbill <laughs> yes. up like this. <laughs> Very occasionally, people in the front row will not know and you'll see somebody be like, oh my goodness. Yeah, they... Um, the other day there was a fifth row program that went up there over was a her face row. and I was like, whoa. It's it like that? Distance. I didn't, yeah. It can I mean, be. I will say, this is again a testament, because if I was being spit on this much by an actor I even slightly disliked, I would be so annoyed. Yeah. Um, and I'm really not. It's you like he drools on me more it. than my son, and I don't care. Like, yeah. I really, I, I t- t- for the acting that I get with it, I take it every day. 100%. Oh my God. 100%. 
I've got 10 more questions on the spitting. No, don't worry. <laughs> Can I address something else? When we did our first round of press for this, we talked about how late he gets into the theater. And I would like to amend We need that to amend because that. We, because it is not quite true. He is always in the theater by half hour. By half hour. He's just not in his dressing room until like sometimes two minutes before the show. But he is always ready. He's in the building. And he is always in the building. I just want to say that because some people got very... He got a lot of heat for that. Yeah, and we, he is always and there. And he is always hour. there. I, I, we, he just we, takes his time to get to his costume. Yes. <laughs> We're going to deal with all the issues about Jonathan Groff by the end of the show. <laughs> this is like a therapy session. Yes. Thank you. So I should pay you. Um, do you leave the show feeling optimistic or sad about this story? You feel, you feel hope? You feel... Because it, 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 it's all the facets of friendship, right? What do you feel coming off that stage? Amped. You feel amped. <laughs> amped at the beginning, amped at the end. I, I think we feel great. I mean, the second act is so fun for us, yep. uh, barring the one breakdown I have to have. Um, it's, it's really so sweet and wonderful. And I, I think the, the gift that this show has given us is that we don't take anything with us. As soon as that scene's over, we, it can't live in our DNA anymore because we can't know anything that we just did. So we don't, I mean, we are, we are effing around until right when we come out there. We, we don't, like... I don't have to get mad before the show starts. You know what I mean? Like, we're, it's just, it's like instantaneous. It's like a light switch, every scene. You can just jump into the moment. And that's also the gift of the writing and just the, the story that lives in us. But we, we're elated when the show's over. It's, it's my favorite scene. It's so fun. I've always find, find it fascinating, like, talking to actors over the years about, like, the showbiz lifestyle and retaining friendships, right? Like, you have a, this intense relationship during production, whether it's a Broadway show or a film or TV show, and then the nature of it is sometimes you'll never see these people again, or you'll see them very rarely, and you've just had this intense experience. Is that something that you have gotten used to? You found, like, a balance over the years? Like, are you the kind of folks that keep actors and crew in your life after a production? Yeah, I mean, you can't keep everyone, obviously. You, there's so many people that you work with, but I think there's... Will some... Jonathan make the cut after the <laughs> Yeah, these two are like, <laughs> yes. They, I mean, I would say I have made probably more really, like, lasting, in wonderful friendships with people that I've worked with on stage than I do on film. I think there's something about the nature of how you work together in uh, in, in theater that, that is very, very bonding. Um, and, yeah, I think there's... it. You know, it's the... Re <laughs> It's the reason, like, I remember the, the, last, the last day I had on my first job, which was David Copperfield, I, like, wept, and I didn't really understand why, and I think there was just some knowledge that, like, I would not see all of those people again, and all of those people felt so special. Um, and I think that's something that I've got better at as I've got older, and I still have a bunch of friends from Potter and from How to Succeed, and from, you know, I, I met my... my, my I was about to say wife, we're not married, but you know, to all intents and purposes, my wife on Kill Your Darlings. Um, you know, I, I've, I've had, I've been lucky to meet and, and keep a lot of these people in my life um, and find some acceptance of the fact that there are also relationships that you're super close when you film and then that, it doesn't exist in that same way, but you're always like, be friendly and be, but, but, but this is different. If I don't know these guys for the rest of my lives, I will be devastated. So the pressure is on. <laughs> Although for the narrative of the show, it would kind of be very poetic if you guys lost touch and, and did it. Shut up, Josh. Oh, God. <laughs> Every time Jonathan says that line, the years from now, oh, I get emotional because I'm like, we will do that. And I, I think it every night when he says it, I, I don't see us, any, I don't see the characters anymore, I just see the three of us. Like, really, that in 10 years from now, we'll, we'll, st we'll still think about this moment, this incredible moment that we've had together. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, like, I, I have never been so um, emotionally connected to a show for so long into the run. Like, there are still moments that, and you're right, there are moments when I don't, I stop seeing the characters and I am just seeing us. And Or when and, I remember the day I told you guys I was pregnant. Oh, my God. And yes, also congratulations to us. We kept it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Bigger congratulations yes. to no, the like doing, doing time. our time that doing night. That, doing that song that night, the three of us were a disaster. Something is stirring. Sings, yeah, what are the lyrics? Something. Something is stirring. Shifting ground. It's just begun. Yeah. And we were just, we were dead. 
<laughs> There's moments when in, in Franklin Shepard Inc. when I look at him and, and the, the wonderful thing about, you know, this job is one of, in some ways it's the most challenging, one of the most challenging things I've done. In some ways it is the easiest I've ever had it as an actor because I just have to look at these two and everyone else on that stage. But like, Jesus Christ, these two, like, I, I, like, like it was when Lindsay does that song at the beginning, I am just like, uh, and I'm about to do a big song and I can't be crying that much, but it like ruins me. Um, the same with like Jonathan at multiple points during the show, I can just like look at them and, and, and it suddenly like any emotion that you need to be there will be there. By my count, I think you carry Dan at least twice during the show. Is that right, Jonathan? Yes. And then one balletic lift into the air. Yes. Is that the most stressful physical moment of the show for you? I look forward to it every night. <laughs> Dan? Dan? <laughs> Is it, is it stressful for you? I feel like it, uh, he's, Swiss, he's very strong. Okay. I weigh 135 pounds soaking wet. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> is it a, in Swiss Army Man? Weren't you carried around a lot too? Like, or was yeah, that? Yeah, bless Paul Dano. He yeah. they offered him a dummy, and he was like, "Nah, I want the weight." Right. So he, yeah, he did carry me a lot. Yeah. It's just an interesting motif in the career. Uh, oh, there's many weird things. Yes, but being carried by incredible actors is a is a is a real perk of my life. <laughs> Is there at this point so far into the run like a stressful moment in the show? Is there something that you think about when you wake up in the morning like, oh, there's this part of the show that I need to get right? You mean, yeah, I rehearse Franklin Shepard Inc. constantly backstage. Um, it's more out of superstition at this point than anything else. Like, I, I know it. But, um, but, and I think there are, like, lines that I'm always aware of as, like, oh, you have to negotiate this in a certain way to make it work or make it right. But... Uh, but no, there's not like, uh, I don't, not, not for me, there's not like a particularly stressful moment anymore. Bobby and Jackie and Jack used to be very stressful because it's so frenetic in all the choreography. But now it, we've gotten to a point where we know it so well that things can go really wrong. Like last night, we have a box full of props that we use in that thing. And then we have a line of uh, cutouts of faces that we use at the end. And we have to pick them up in a really specific order. Two seconds before we went on for that number last night, Jonathan... I don't know how, managed to upend the box of props so that everything inside, which is very specifically placed so we know where everything else, was completely jumbled up and knocked like four of the faces off the table. Um, but then like we know it so well and that number is just these guys doing a number in a nightclub so it can be really messy and we know it well enough for it to be messy and still be good. Right. Yeah. Most, uh, you mentioned superstition. Who's the most superstitious in the group? <laughs> Me, yeah. How does that manifest? Do, doing Frank and Shepard Inc. a thousand times backstage okay. before the show, and that's, I don't think I have any other superstitions particularly. Do you I? just that you're dressed by half hour? Because oh, the show oh, yeah. might start early. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. One day they might just be like, everyone's here and in their seats, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the same answer. Who's like the toughest on themselves? Who's like the most self-critical? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me again. Okay. Okay. I will have you know, this is a little bit of a side note. I mentioned to you backstage that Gary Oldman was on the stage here recently, had a great chat with him, and he called his work in Harry Potter mediocre, and the entire audience yeah, what, did what you're doing and shook their head and gasped. I mean, yeah, he, he's told, I won't say what, uh, he, he aren't... <laughs> He asked me on the last day of his filming, I think for the fifth film, he was like, have I been a good serious? And I wanted to cry. I was like, yes, oh my God, what? <laughs> like, yeah, he's, de you know, he, he's, he's um, also really self-critical, I think. And, uh, but, you know, I, I, but also it's insane that he thinks that way. It's crazy, yeah. If, yeah, Gary Oldman is being critical of his own acting. What hope is there for anyone? Right, else? yeah, it never ends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's most likely to have a wardrobe malfunction? What? <laughs> you ripped your pants oh open. My. And you ripped your pants the other day. I yeah. did rip my pants, yeah. Yeah. I just only have one costume base. There are two costumes. <laughs> I know, so but they've gone way more wrong me, than our yeah. stuff. Who's most likely outside of the show to burst into song just any minute of the day? Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> really, always. Yeah. If you say a line that's inadvertently a line from a, In a song, musical, Jonathan it's knows already that song happening, and he will sing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> who? <laughs> who uh, is the biggest karaoke -er here? Do Broadway stars do karaoke? That feels like a. I I, I love karaoke. I love karaoke. Yeah. Yes. I don't. I don't think you do. Do you either? No. You, no. No. It's yeah. A, you, 
which is nice for the rest of us because they're really good singers. So yeah. it's good for them to keep away from that it. That would be the worst yeah. nightmare to see Lindsay or Jonathan walk into your karaoke room. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> uh, what's your go-to karaoke of choice lately? Oh, I mean, uh, me and my girlfriend do a, a duet of um, It's All Coming Back to Me Now. Um, yeah. Um, and because the lyrics in that song are insane. Um, and uh, Bloodhound Gang, Bad Touch, that's one Erin does mainly. Um, I, I, yeah, those, those would be, I, I've done them a lot. <laughs> uh, you all have many amazing credits on Broadway by now. What's the biggest difference between the first day you stepped on stage on Broadway versus yesterday? When you think back to the actor you were when you first stepped on a Broadway stage, what do you think of? Lindsay, were you nervous back then or were you like, I'm born for this, this is, this is where I belong? <laughs> no, dear. I was, um, <clears throat> no, I was totally a nervous wreck. Um, but, uh, I guess the difference now is I think I, when I started, I thought I had to be perfect. And now I know that like the best is in the unexpected and in the change every night and in whatever I bring that day is gonna be the best performance I'm gonna give is whatever I went through that day. And I didn't know that when I started. So that's the biggest difference for me. Jonathan, take me back to first day on a Broadway stage. I think it's funny. I, I feel like that your answer just inspired me to, f I feel like I used to act to escape myself. Like, uh, like, in, in, like in my life, anyone? <laughs> we, had a, we had one woo. It's probably my publicist. Um, uh, in my life was my first Broadway show, and then Spring Awakening, and I was closeted in in during during both of those shows. And I think I was like, I, it was like uh, acting and and getting the chance to be on Broadway was like this escape from my real life. And it was like this childhood dream and this place I could go to express myself and feel safe and not address what was happening in my real life. And now it's the exact opposite. It's like now I act to push myself further and to dig in deeper and to offer up everything that, like what you're saying about not being perfect, I relate to that too. Like to show, to show and explore every side of myself and, and hopefully invite the audience to explore every side of themselves as well. That like that to me now is the opportunity. It's less escapism and more um, like investigation. And for you, it must have, it would have been Equus, I, I suppose. Yeah, it was Equus in in London, and then uh, and then on Broadway. I mean, I think for me, coming from sort of the Potter films and going on stage for the first time, there was a real sense of like, do I belong here? Like, and and um, is this going to be okay? <laughs> like, I don't know. And particularly with How to Succeed, like even more so, a, a musical. Like, I'd never, I I'd, I'd grown up listening to musicals, but I and I think I had always wanted to do one, but I hadn't pictured that it would happen that quickly. Um, and yeah, I think I had a huge complex about like, yeah, like, do I belong here? Or am I just being given this opportunity because I'm famous, because I'm Harry Potter? Um, and I think I have a lot less of that now. Like, I've got more of a sense. Like, when I step into a rehearsal room, now, I'm like, no, I've done like this is my fifth show. I've done, I've done this. Like, I know what I'm doing. I can bring. I'm not. I can't sing like these guys can, but I can. I can bring something to a show that is of value and is mine. And you know, Dan, so you sing down. I sing fine. You gotta stop. Doing that. <laughs> yeah. Stop. I mean, you gotta let that. Some go, lights is very good. Some lights is fine. Oh, that is so <laughs> much. I cannot believe you say fine. that. You gotta drop it, Dan. I know. Come on, own it. You're a genius. Come on. Ed. <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed to say that after doing like five or six different And you're Broadway doing Sondheim, shows. like the hardest <laughs> musical theater there is, and you're slaying every night. Yes. 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 This may further embarrass you, but this is too good to pass up. I looked through old conversations, and this is a conversation I had 10 years ago uh, with the late, great Alan Rickman, and we were talking about you. And I, I just wanted to share it with you because it's, it's a pretty, I don't know, it's a special piece of tape. Um, let's take a look at this. Oh, sure. 
it's remarkable to see what's come of the of the kids uh, in their adulthood to see the kinds of careers they've crafted and personally how cool they are mm -hmm. all are and is that something that surprises you that excites you that, that I mean you you have a very unique vantage point on the on their evolution as well, human I think it's beings. a relief as much as anything <laughs> else because could have gone another way <laughs> well you just you know you watch that situation and as much as I was any doing it and the rest of us for seven weeks they were doing it 52 weeks it was this was their life yeah from 12 to 22 um, and you would watch it from the sidelines at times and try to throw the odd lifeline in um, because there was so little time for that and it's only in recent years that for example I've managed to sit down in a cafe with in New York with Daniel at one point he was down the road in one theater and I was up the road in another um, huge pride to go and see him in uh, the musical funny uh, so how to succeed or was how to succeed a, yeah and you see what is he it's how dare he be dancing as well as the New York <laughs> dancers because he worked at it Thanks for showing me that. I've never seen that before. Thank you. Um, I will say, Alan was somebody, I was so intimidated by Alan Rickman, because how could you not be by that voice? Like, even just hearing that voice, you forget. You forget quite how low that voice was until it, like, it echoes through you. Um, he, I was so intimidated by him for the first, like, three movies. I was just, like, terrified of him, and I was like, this guy hates me. <laughs> um, and... Somewhere along the line, I think, you know, he, he, he saw that, like, I, I really wanted to do this and I really wanted to work at it. And he would, he cut short a vacation in Canada to come and see me in Equus. He saw every piece of stage work I ever did while he was alive. He would take me out afterwards. We would talk about it. He was like, you know, he was like one of the first people to say, like, hey, you should look at, like, voice coaching and Alexander Technique and, like, all this stuff that, like, he was like, you're probably not going to get this otherwise. So, like, you should just, like, investigate all this stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so, so lucky to, and, yeah, to, to hear him saying that's really lovely. Thank you for showing me that. Happy, Sad, Confused is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run? Would you sleep a little more? Would you visit a friend? Would you read a book? Most of us spend our lives thinking about having extra time, but the real question, the real question we should be asking ourselves, is time for what? What would you use if you had unlimited time? Therapy can help decide what to use that time for, what's important in your life. I've benefited from therapy, friends have too. If you're looking to start therapy, BetterHelp is there for you. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient and flexible and suited to your busy schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. Plus, they have flexibility. Think about that. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Therapy is invaluable in these stressful times. Give BetterHelp a try. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash HSC today to get 10% off your first month. That's right. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash HSC. Give therapy a try. So I think this is a, another topic that you have different philosophies on. Uh, a show like this brings out amazing folks to, to the theater. Uh, I think J-Lo came by the other night, as far as I saw. Now, do you want to know who's in the audience? Do you like to make eye contact? I do not want to know who's in the audience. Absolutely not. Never. I love knowing when people are in the audience. <laughs> it's, a, it's a shocker. <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of right in the middle. Like, I don't, I don't need to know. I, I, I don't really I don't care. It's not that I don't care. It's just like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, no, I I don't mean it like that. I mean like I'm gonna. I, I think I'm like I'm gonna do the show no matter what. Like for all the other people that are here, and and it, it'll be lovely to meet them after you know if that happens. But yeah, I don't know. Are the we have some young children in uh, between the the group here? Have they been into see the show? Is the music of Merrily in their lives? 
Yeah, in both of their lives. I mean, yeah. Lu Lucy, my daughter, yeah. she's going to be three um, in a couple weeks, and um, she comes to the theater like twice a week and hangs out, and um, during the overture, she comes down and dances with all of us off stage, and it's like the cool. It's like her favorite. She's always like, Uncle Jonathan, are we going to dance? And <laughs> she loves it. And then. <laughs> and then my partner like whisks her out into the side door and she's always like, have a great show, like so loud. <laughs> or see you guys. Like she is, but it's, um, this, this has like already put such a mark on her, which I'm just so thrilled about. She just, she loves the theater. It's so awesome. We've got another one. <laughs> And my, my son is too young to, to like be dancing, although he has started walking and doing something that resembles dancing. Um, and, but um, no, I mean, he, I, I, I'm, I held him while I was learning some of these songs. Yeah. You try singing Our Time Holding Your New Baby. It's impossible. <laughs> it's you will just cry. Well, and this, um, one, this one gets to hear it eight times a week. I know, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'll, he, he's, he's, it's going in subliminally. Are you going to be literally the only parent that doesn't read Harry Potter to their kids for? <laughs> no, I mean, I think I'll, I'll, I'll read it if he wants me to read it to him. Like, okay. if he gets into it, yeah, of course I will. Okay. Like, I'm not going to, I think it's, I do think I'm going to have a really weird time over the next few years of like, like, this is a beautiful time when he is not aware of me being anything else but his dad. And that's going to be really, really hard to, like, I'm, I just want to, like, keep me being famous a secret from him from as long as humanly possible. Yeah. Lucy fun. loves Frozen, and she has no idea that oh. Jonathan is Kristoff. <laughs> None. This will be quite the revelation. Her, my, her head be... is going to come off. Like, I don't... <laughs> it really is. I know, I don't think I want her to know. I just, I think I want to keep that separate as long as I can. Like Santa, you know, just, right. like, <laughs> just want to, like, just keep a lid on that. I love it. All right, some questions from our lovely audience. Um, if you can choose a musical to star in next together, which would it be and why? I want to do... What? What were you going to say? The, just the first image I had was the three of us doing There's Gotta Be Something Better Than This from Sweet Charity. <laughs> I thought there we said we something? were going to do Follies. Oh, yeah, Follies, like 20 years from now. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's a real answer. <laughs> Although uh, my answer was real. I, we, I do want to do, like, I love dancing with you guys. <laughs> that can continue after the show, just in real life. And, yes, what Alan Rickman was saying about your dancing and how to succeed, it was, like, off the chain. We all have had a rewatch of the Tony Awards when Dan was on the Tonys and doing his dancing because we put a little piece of choreography into old friends one night to surprise him. He had some notes for me. He was like, you have to get higher on the balls of your feet. But it is wild that you were like dancing better than the New York dancers. I was it was not like, dancing better than the New York you dancers. You were, Dan. You were um, I, I was it. holding my own and, I'm that do, and doing that is still absolutely one of the things I am proudest of that I've ever done. Um, that show, I, I actually rewatched that because we, we had a How to Succeed reunion uh, like a few weeks ago and uh, I, I, because it was in my head and I rewatched that and I was like, Wow, man, that's really good. I was really impressed. I have to. I'm very rarely watch anything I've done, and I'm impressed by myself. But that I watched, and I was like, "That's, I, yeah, that's, I, that was cool." <laughs> it's crazy. Dan has agreed to do all the choreography right now, live for us. That's <laughs> <laughs> shocking. Um, are there any group warm-ups or rituals you do as a whole cast? Do you like have a moment backstage, or are you each doing your own things? Or <laughs> there's some unmentionable, unmentionable ones. What? Um, <laughs> But, but we always sit in, in Lindsay's dressing room. We often sit in Lindsay's dressing room, the three of us. And then during the overture, Lindsay makes her entrance as the Lady of the Hudson, which is her name. Uh, so her dressing room is like next to Dan's on this like upper level off stage. I have like a balcony outside of my yeah. room. And I make an entrance at a certain point in the overture and everyone down <laughs> the floor of the stage gives me a round. <laughs> And I do a different dance every night, depending on how I'm feeling about that particular day. And uh, that's how we start the play. <laughs> um, how has your approach to the character evolved from the beginning of rehearsals to now? What's the biggest difference, you think, in how you're approaching your respective characters? Uh, the, the, when I watched the show on YouTube, 
and Frank said, um, I've made only one mistake in my life, but I've made it over and over and over. That was saying yes when I meant no. I was like, uh, that line went through my body and I was like, I have to play this part because I, I, I've done that so often in my life and do that so often in my life and I'm interested in investigating what's happening with this guy. And then I, and, and then I would listen before we started rehearsals to our time and I couldn't, <laughs> why is this coming up for me now? I don't know why, but I couldn't, I couldn't listen to it without hysterically crying and I couldn't understand why. And I think that like the, like, um, there's something about like the, oh my God, I'm a fucking mess, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my God, I think there's something about the, um, the, the like a purity about those characters at the beginning of the story, like you said, beginning of the story, end of the show, that I think we militantly have to protect in ourselves. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. This is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> we are gonna wait and that, and get your no. together. And so I guess like that, like um, the the difference being, although you wouldn't know it now, I I like uh, I, I found a way to like harness that uncontrollable crying uh, into the in the playing of the show. So now when when we're actually playing the show there's something very spiritual about it for me and, and for the audience. And we're about to do our 200th performance on Broadway since we opened on Sunday. And there's like, like the, so I guess the difference, to answer the question, I'm so sorry. The, to answer the question, I, it was like, a, it, it, was, it felt like there's something in here that I need to find for myself in this character and in this show. And it has, and it has totally um, changed into, I am dying to offer this up to this audience and to share this piece with this audience. And not, not a performance has, has gone by where I haven't felt just like such incredible gratitude to be able to, to like offer it up as a gift that we get to do this amazing show that only ran for two weeks on, on Broadway 42 years ago and, and that it's a hit. And so it, now it feels, like, it feels like a mission almost every time I get to the theater and we get to go out and do that. It's like, it feels like such a beautiful responsibility um, and, and an offering to the audience. No, but I mean, I kind of alluded to this at the start. I mean, the narrative of the history of this musical is forever changed. It was the musical, the infamous, the Sondheim musical that closed after 16 performances, and now it's, now it's the show that was rediscovered and was a hit. That's really nice. I think there's a, there is recency bias in this as well. There will be other great productions of this show. We are very happy to be like a part of that, um, but I think we can, you know, the, oh, see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect example. Right on brand. Uh, um, <laughs> um, and yeah, and, and we are like, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled. Look, obviously we're all thrilled with the reaction that this show has gotten, that people are loving it and that we get to do it for the, this, these amazing audiences that we're getting. Um, but yeah, I'd also like to say that like, you know, there's going to be other great versions for other generations to see. This is a great show. And it's, if we can be a part of like highlighting how great a show this is, then that's fantastic. Uh, we're going to end with the happy second fuse, profoundly random questions. Uh, some theater specific ones, musical specific ones. Uh, Mamma Mia, one or two? Which do you prefer? <laughs> which film? I've only seen one, so I guess two, by default, one. one. Okay, okay, okay. I actually just recently rewatched Mamma Mia, one. That's what we're calling it. Yeah. <laughs> and That's it what is those in the know call so it, good. <laughs> and Amanda Seyfried is like, Oh, that's for those listening at home. That's a nice noise. That's, that's good. That's good. It's a good positive. positive she noise. is so effing amazing in that it, to to sell to have the camera in your face and be like dot dot dot. You know, in the beginning, she's you know that. <laughs> 
That movie is so good. So I'm gonna pick Mamma Mia one, but I haven't seen Mamma Mia two. But now I gotta wait. Wait till you see Mamma Mia two. Oh my god, oh. your mind's gonna. Are you a Mamma Mia two? I'm equal opportunity. Okay. I don't want to pick favorites. Okay. <laughs> um, cats or Phantom? Never, never seen Phantom. I watched the movie of Cats, and for various reasons, had a great time. So Cats. <laughs> Just had a good takeout that night, and you were just, you were just. There, there's some choices that have been made all over that film that I really, really appreciated. And uh, I, I'm, I had a very, as I said, very good time. Okay. Everybody to Dan's house after this. We're watching Cats. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, when, you, when you started saying that and you said Cats or Fans, I looked over and I saw that, that thing on your card and I went, I, I didn't put together that I thought you were going to say cats or dogs, and I hadn't made the connection that you were talking. So I was like, wait, the animal cats and the show Phantom? It seems like a really weird choice. <laughs> My questions are odd. They're not that odd. Um, Barbie or Oppenheimer? Oh, that's, that's genuinely really hard. Yeah. Oppenheimer is one of my favorite films I've seen for a long time. Like, but Barbie was incredible. Barbie is an incredible film and a feat of filmmaking. The fact that Greta Gerwig got a massive corporation to make her let that make that version of that movie and make it so weird and delightful and insane is like uh, and Margot Robbie and that film. obviously Ryan Gosling is amazing but like what Margot Robbie is essentially like he gets to have the time of his life playing Ken she's doing a like a seriously dramatic performance in every scene it's I I, 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 I can't that one I can't choose Wait, which Ken do you want to be in the sequel Dan have you decided Oh, I mean, any. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm castable as that after Gosling. <laughs> Anyone else know? You almost, you had a little dalliance with, with Barbie. Barbie almost came into your world, didn't it? You were up for a part in Barbie. That's what they say. <laughs> for the record, the only part of the night, afternoon, when Jonathan was quiet. <laughs> so I got silent. <laughs> uh, what do you guys collect? Does anybody collect anything here? <laughs> what do we collect? Yeah, I think you collect. Take out bags. <laughs> <laughs> so Jonathan is single and lives <laughs> and he lives alone. <laughs> That's why I'm crying on all these answers. <laughs> and um and the first time we went over to his apartment, he was like, I just have to clean up a little. And he had literally, what, Dan? Seven, eight. Seven or eight sweet green takeout bags <laughs> all on the floor. And because he eats every meal out and, and, and just always has a million takeout bags. But also, so like, do we want to, how deeply do we want to go into this? Yeah. Do Very deeply. We're, we're here. We're here. Like sing your, sing the song. Time. Sing the song that you've Jonathan written. doesn't like. Take out bags. I live alone and there are my take, take out bags. <laughs> That's what I collect. Oh, and then also, he has to take out the trash. He has to take out the trash at a specific time because he's so embarrassed by the amount of takeout bags that he has that he doesn't want He doesn't want, want, his, he doesn't want his, his door attendant to see him so, taking out his trash. And I, I've, we've told him many times, that guy does not care. No. He does not care how many takeout bags he has, but he still he does he's it under the cover about of his darkness. Takeout bags. And the thing is, so in my basement of my building, they separate the paper from the plastic from the trash from the compost. So I, I have two trash <laughs> cans in my apartment for the plastic and the trash, but the takeout bags are paper. So they're collecting over there. And there's so many. And there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's what I collect. Yeah. Wow, there you go. Glad you didn't start crying during the paper or plastic <laughs> conversation, for the record. <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's, <laughs> Keep it together, everybody. We're in the home stretch. <laughs> Worst note a director has ever given you? On stage, on screen, on set? Oh, just, just feel it. Just feel it? Just feel it. I need you to feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Do it less gay. Whoa! <laughs> oh. You know what's not funny, but 
Andrew Rannells was on the stage, basically had the exact same kind of note he described, someone gave, gave him. We are sadly out of time. Thank you guys for coming to this Jonathan Groff therapy session. Um, <laughs> uh, no, it, alone. And there's my take out bags. <laughs> coming to off, 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 off Broadway next season. Take out bags, the musical. Um, in all honesty, uh, congratulations on the show. It is such a special piece of work. Merrily we roll along. It's continuing. It's continuing. July 7th is the final performance. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. If you have checked it out, check it aga out again. Give it up for the amazing cast of Merrily. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. And so ends another edition of Happy, Sad, Confused. Remember to review, rate, and subscribe to this show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm a big podcast person. I'm Daisy Ridley, and I definitely wasn't pressured to do this by Josh. <laughs>